Hey everybody, my name is Max McAllister and I'm here today to do a setup video and a little talk and kind of uh, demonstration of the Blackout Link um, handheld archery release. Um, so uh, the reason I went to try these, I've got my wife to start uh, shooting a bow and she really likes it. And she has preferred a handheld release over a wrist release. So <clears throat> I wanted to get a couple of uh, handheld releases to try. Uh, these seem to be nice. This uh, brand is the uh, Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's branded uh, house product. Um, it's an aluminum release, anodized. And uh, its, its function is quite simple. Um, you, you want to come a little closer. Uh, that's your catch that grabs your D loop on your on your bowstring. When you close the trigger, it latches onto the, your string, and then you can draw and release your um, arrow. And <clears throat> that's how simple that is. Now, uh, but what I wanted to talk to you about was uh, setting it up and adjusting it. Um, it comes packaged as such. Um, I'm gonna, I've got one that's set up and I wanted to do the second one so you could see all the stuff I do. Because I spent a lot of time trying to arrive at a, a good usable setup with it. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because the instructions are terrible at best. Um, if almost non-existent. There's nothing on the internet, nothing from the company. Um, there's only a couple of even terrible videos that review this that are of no use as far as setting it up. The instructions come in this little paper roll. <clears throat> um, it's just this one page, and there's, you know, it really, uh, the information contained on it is not um, of any particular use. Um, as far as setting it up. They call, the, um, the first adjustment they talk about is called trigger tra travel adjustment. And that's kind of a misnomer. This is sort of like uh, setting the tension for release, uh, you know, for a trigger on a pistol or a rifle, um, the amount of pressure it takes to release it. They're calling it travel. Um, it is sort of related to that, but what it really does is affects how much pressure it takes to, to release that, uh, make that um, trigger release. So that is adjusted with a 50 thousandths Allen key. It is very tiny. You'll have to have a, a very complete set of Allen keys to have one that small. But uh, it's located here on the side of the main body of it, kind of at an angle. <clears throat> now, they supply it with, with nothing uh, to really lock it in place. And uh, so I apply a little blue Loctite to this. And now, well, actually, this one did have a little something on it. The first one I set up had nothing. This one, they did put a little locking agent on it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to put some blue Loctite. Now, the trick to setting it up, I'll show you, is... You're going to want to run it in. If you run it in too far, it won't actually engage at all anymore. So what we're going to do is purposefully run it in. Oh, I'm doing the wrong one. That's why it's locked in. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm doing the one I already did. Well, I'll show you on mine again anyway. That's fine. Uh, you're going to want to run the adjuster in until the trigger stops working or pops open. Okay, so I've got it to where... Now it, it won't lock open anymore. And uh, back it out until it get, you get it just to the point where it tries to engage, like there, and go in a hair. You want it to not want to engage. All right, so there is the point where it just, ref, just now won't engage. From there, you're gonna back out the screw two turns, okay? So count rotations. There's a half, one, one and a half, two. All right. Now, at that setting, the trigger 
is um, uh, has a, a significant amount of resistance, but not, uh, but it's not a hair trigger. So if you set it to one and a half, okay, um, if you set it to one and a half, it becomes more of a hair trigger. And uh, I found that I was worried that I could accidentally release my bowstring by doing that. So I wanted a little more margin of error. So I found that two turns is good. So um, you can play with that. But like I said, at one and a half, it gets pretty easy. At one, it's like a hair trigger on a rifle or a pistol. You wouldn't, I don't think it's safe because you could release your bow, release your arrow by accident. All right. Now, uh, the videos on the internet, there's people using this thing in all kinds of ways. Um, it comes out of the package configured for three fingers. It comes with an adapter to make it four fingered. I kind of preferred the four fingered. I, I just kind of, for another reason, I'll show you why in a moment. <clears throat> um, and the, uh, the actual spool you can grab with your thumb, there's two holes so you can relocate it. And then on the spool itself, uh, this uses a 764 Allen key to take it on and off. That on the spool itself are two holes. One is centered, one's off center, so it has like a cam styled nature. I found that as delivered, the thumb spool was in the way of my thumb and I couldn't really grab it properly. So I recommend that you use the inner hole, the closest in hole, and then use the offset cam hole um for the, the thumb spool okay and we're going to rotate it in a fashion where it comes around take a look here we're going to rotate it so that it basically lines up with this arc on the top of the on the trigger arm itself. Okay, so there's a little gap here. You don't want it to touch, just a hair off. Let me point with that. It's a little tiny gap there. Just make it so it's not touching. You can just crack it off there. It'll basically line right up with that edge smooth and then tighten that down. All right, and now real quick while I'm doing this, I'm going to um, set this uh, adjuster screw on this one as well. So as you can see, this is one that I just took out of the box. This has no, nothing retaining the screw on it at all. So I thought that was problematic because the adjustment is so sensitive that over time, there's no way that this thing wouldn't uh, drift or move on you. So, and knowing that it could drift in the direction of being uh, less safe, I thought I would put a locking agent on mine. I, want, I didn't want it to be um, able to move ever once I had it set. All right, so let me run this in again. <clears throat> I'm going to do that same procedure. You can actually, um, let's see, where is this here? Let's find where it wants to engage. So there you go. Another way of approaching it is to have it closed and just turn it in until it just clicks. It's going to get you the same amount of closeness. So we're going to go a half turn one turn one and a half two and let's see if that feels the same it does here's two yeah all right now as far as uh changing out the third and fourth finger um uh in the bag there's kind of some glue they glue it in the package so you'll need some sort of um contact cleaner or alcohol to get the glue off from where they glued it in the package um, <clears throat> the uh, third finger comes out using a 1 16th Allen key and you will loosen that screw up 
and there's a pin that falls out one way. It goes out one side, you can poke it, this, or turn it upside down, it'll fall out. Um, the uh, fourth finger, they don't thread the screw in for you. I'm not sure why they didn't do that, but they didn't. So you'll run the screw in until you kind of see it coming right there. You can kind of see it coming through, back that up. This, you'll you need to reuse the screw that you took out of the third finger. So the fourth finger has two screws because it has a sweep adjustment to it. You can adjust its angle. Um, I preferred it um, all the way forward um, in a level in line. And I'll show you why when I show you how I found it was best to draw. So to get it um, into that position, you'll use this, um, the screw that's externally visible and you'll tighten that one all the way down and that locks this forward. It can sweep back this way if you wanted your finger backwards, but to me that again didn't make any sense why you would do that uh, because then your finger it's just like a rest instead of something to actually hold. Now, but so as far as gripping and using this, uh, again, no instructions. You'd say, well, it should be pretty obvious, but it's not. <clears throat> so there's more than one way to uh, use this when you draw. So if you're unfamiliar with it, there's a couple of things that I would recommend trying at first. So when, once you grab your D-loop, uh, if you're pulling on this in any way and touch that trigger, you're going to release the string and potentially misfire an arrow. So while you're learning with it, or just the first few times you use it, I'm going to suggest you put your thumb behind the trigger and draw. All right. Once you draw, then you can move your thumb into position. Now, uh, most of the people on the internet, if you see the videos, they're just kind of doing this and putting their finger on the, their thumb on the trigger and releasing the release this way. <clears throat> if you notice this, this is designed with a depression here. And that's, I believe, the preferred way to use it. You should put your thumb in that depression and hold it. And that trigger is going to lay in your hand. So you, See where I've located the wheel. I went to great lengths and experimented with all the possible positions. I've got that thumb wheel um, in this pocket so that when I draw, um, I'm not touching the trigger. But then when I want to trigger fire, I'm still hold, pinching that, the body. Then I just squeeze my thumb and that releases it. Just that simple. So I'm fully anchored and that's all I have to do. So uh, now, uh, if you disregard what I said and you set it to hair trigger and you're trying to draw, it's again easy to touch if you're going to use this, this method I'm talking about. So you, it's just something that's going to take some experience. Now, I, I get around that by really arching my thumb and making sure I'm pushing down on the frame. And the other thing I do while I draw, if you see my index finger, I push, I'm putting that to the inside of the trigger, again, as, a, as another method of securing it so I don't accidentally uh, misfire the bow while I draw. So once I'm there, I can relax my finger and make that squeeze. So a couple of ways of doing it. Uh, and another one is to just put your thumb right on it and hold the trigger forward while you draw. Draw, and then you can do this, or if you want, go to this position and do that. So a couple options there as to how you actually draw and fire. Um, but I really do kind of like this pocketed feeling for the, having the trigger in the pocket in my hand because it, it just really uh, makes it so I don't move. My thumb isn't, you know, uh, uh, doing, moving the actual release any more than necessary. So with this all anchored, it's, it's a motion where everything's locked and I don't really, I don't feel anything move, just, just the, the um, trigger release. So hopefully that helps save you a bunch of time um, because I've, I spent hours and hours and hours sorting through this to get this to where it worked and then uh, experimented with sh shooting it and uh, found the best ways to draw and fire it. Um, they don't include any kind of a wrist lanyard. So if you're a hunter, you'll have to find um, a wrist lanyard. 
they have them kind of for sale on Amazon. I'll try and throw links up to the ones I found that are uh, uh, aimed at cell phones or uh, old, di old digital cameras. You can buy uh, lanyards for cheap. So uh, and that way you have something so you can't drop this out of a tree stand uh, <coughs> if you're hunting. So uh, that's my review of the Blackout Link of how to set it up and use it. Um, I think it's a pretty good product. This was about a hundred bucks. Um, I know you can spend a fortune on it, but this seems quite uh, robust, reliable, and once you get it set up, it seems to be a really nice release. So, my name's Max. Thanks for watching, um, and I'll keep an eye out on my channel for more cool content. I'll be back soon.